welcome to episode four of Sequin Girly Creates. Oh, I've just realised I'm a bit greased today, I do apologise. Welcome back if you've seen my other episodes and welcome if you are new here. Welcome to people from Instagram who've come over and welcome to people here. If you're new to me here and you haven't seen my Instagram, if you go over to Instagram, I am at Sequin Girly where you can see stories of little sneak peeks of my makes and more stills of photos of my makes and my thrifting and you can kind of see more sort of general of my life and my sort of creations and my things that I get up to. If you don't already subscribe I would love it if you could subscribe and also like my uh, videos because it really helps but also so that you can come and join me in this. I for probably about a year have really felt that vloggers particularly sewing vloggers and sort of thrifting people have become sort of like my internet family there are certain people who almost like their voice now is reassuring to me and I would love it if I could be that for some other people too today's episode is all about what kind of thrift flips but also sort of adjustments things that make clothing work for me one of the things that I decided when I sort of really took sewing back up again at the end of 2022, sort of mid-2022, was I really wanted to create a wardrobe that suited me rather than what the shops told me I should wear. Three years ago, I took a vow to try to buy as little new clothes as I could, and that's gone really well. I buy a lot of secondhand through charity shops, Vinted, eBay... Instagram sellers I buy a lot of vintage clothes and sewing was sort of the next step in curating and creating a wardrobe that worked for me not with the colours the fashions that are out there and that's one of the things I love about thrifting too is looking for gaps in my wardrobe and looking for those things rather than what is in the shops right now. If you are coming over from Instagram, then you may be aware that last year I had a breast reduction. If you don't know, if you go to Instagram, there is a reel about that. So obviously since then, a lot of my clothes look different on me now, feel different, look different and don't work. So I have done a lot of adjustments or flipping of those clothes to make them work for me now. I've also sold quite a few clothes because, as many people will know, as we get older, our bodies change and I want to wear clothes that suit me. I really don't want to hold on to anything that doesn't fit me and doesn't bring me joy. And it's really important that the clothes fit the body I have. So I have, and I think I spoke about this in a previous video, um, taken to selling some of my beloved clothes and then actually using the money to buy them in the right size particularly brands like um, Collective who make new versions of vintage clothing it's pointless me hanging on to one and going one day I'll get back into that one day I'll get back what's the point so selling them and giving them to charity shop etc and having a wardrobe of clothes that fit to me and are comfortable is an important part of this journey so let's start with what I'm wearing today. This was a t-shirt that was reduced in a charity shop because it had a little hole, like a moth type hole. It's actually a Bear Grylls t-shirt. The, uh, what does it say? Live Your Adventure Bear Grylls. And there he is, paragliding on the front. And I took off the sleeves, I put darts in the t-shirt to create shape, and I added some gingham sleeves. I'm now thinking I should have been brave and taken the shoulders in even more. But this was something I made pre-operation, but I'm still really happy. The necklace I'm wearing is from the Crafty Antita. I will put her link below and I love her necklaces. I've got about four or five of them now. And one of the great things is when you buy the chain, she does like extra bits so you can lengthen and shorten them depending on your outfit. And the earrings I'm, I'm wearing are me made earrings. As I said, Sequin Girly Creates, I don't just sew. And I created these. These are resin earrings. So let's get on. Some of the items I haven't got here because they're packed away in my loft for my winter wardrobe. But I will talk about them and I'll put pictures up. So let's start with a shirt that I flipped. This was a men's shirt. And it had been reduced, which tells me it was in a charity shop that nobody wanted it. I know you so say don't... So, 
there is a whole conversation around buying things that only fit us and leaving things for other people but my attitude is like with this Bear Grylls t-shirt it had been reduced which tells me no one else is buying it and this is the same with this shirt and it is my colours if you see the colours I wear and things you'll know this is my colour so this is the colour of it it was a large men's shirt so I did various things to it so first of all I put darts in so I will put a picture up here of what it looked like to start with and then a picture after a bit of what it looked like after but so you know I put darts in I took off the sleeves took in the side and then put the sleeves back on and did a little gather so that I didn't make the sleeves smaller so it gives a little puff to the sleeve that then naturally shortened the sleeve to the right length and obviously did the same on that side I took unpicked the pocket to put the dart in so I unpicked the side of the pocket put the dart in and then stitched the pocket back on because I liked having the pocket the front collar and packet stayed the same I shortened it and I actually shortened it about an inch too much but that's okay I have got some of the fabric left I can always add it on again and then the final bit I did with the bottom curve of the length that I chopped off is I actually added in a frill along the yoke and you can see the curve there that was the curve so I gathered it it was already hemmed because it was the bottom of the shirt so I didn't need to hem it and then I believe yep I did a fold in the yoke while the sleeves were off to bring it up slightly because it was the the, the armhole was too big and then stitch this in and you can see on the inside I then surged that and I even understitched it to make sure that it laid upwards and I'm really glad I did that because I think that's what just takes it to a next level this is when you see clothes that are well made and not clothing that's fast fashion that people are paid pennies to make when you see clothes that are made and there's quite a lot of really good quality sellers now on Instagram hand making clothes really high quality it's little bits like that little details that elevate it and that's something I really want to do in my sewing is just taking things to that next level so that is that one I also thrift flipped another second hand polka dot mustard shirt I'll pop a picture up here pre-operation it fitted me fine afterwards it swamped me and so again sleeves off shoulders in sides in and added some frills and some extra detail so you can see that here it was a mustard polka dot one it's one of the most critical things I do is moving in the sleeves so the shoulders are not hanging down looking like things are swamping me because I'm quite petite I'm only five foot two it's so easy for shoulders to swamp and look like things are not meant for me let's carry on the theme of shirts for a minute I did the same with a red sort of button front V top that had zebras on it the shoulders were just far too wide when I first bought it I bought it because it was perfect across the chest because the reason for a breast reduction is there's a lot of chest going on and so I bought the shoulders in and it looked much better it still suits me fine so I'll put a picture in now so you can see that one as well if you haven't done it and you're looking at clothes in your wardrobe that don't suit you moving the shoulders and moving the sleeves in can make all the difference so sometimes I will take the time to really carefully unpick all the way round other times if they're a long way too far I will cut them because I know I'm going to have to cut fabric off anyway so I will cut and then, then it's taking in the sides which naturally then brings the armhole smaller and then either cutting the arm shorter which will often shorten the size or gathering around the top like with the patina blouse so things I've learned from making patterns I can then go into adjusting clothes I've made and that's definitely something that suddenly makes a piece of clothing look like it was meant for you not that you're borrowing someone else's clothes so on the theme of shirts there was a couple of men's shirts I saw 
always threads, always, I'm going to have to take snip those off, in a charity shop that again had been there a good a long time. I think the collar on one of them was getting a bit threadbare. So there was a, a gingham one and then there was a striped one. And there is a short on this that you can watch about turning these into a dress. Um, and this one is still on a journey because I made it for myself pre reduction and now it doesn't look right again because I really tailored it to suit me so I'm having a really hard think about what to do it has had quite a lot of adjustments now so it looks like this and there will be video things in there and then on the back like this so what I did was I kept the front of the shirt took it in did the same but swapped sleeves so I put the sleeves of the other shirt in so kept the placket down the front and this is one of the challenges now is where I've had the reduction is I need to bring this in more. I put uh, darts in and then I use the placket of the front of the other shirt for the skirt down the front and then added pieces of fabric and the other shirt, the back of the other shirt on and I made a gathered skirt. And then this is a vintage sheet and using the leftover of all the fabric, I then made a frill around the bottom. I'm really happy with it, but I'm not happy with how it hangs on me right now. So I, I just know I won't wear it. So I will put a picture in of how it looks right now. And you can see sort of how it looked pre-operation, how it looks now. I love all the colours together. I it's just reaching that point where it's been tweaked and snipped and things so many times. I'm just asking myself, is it is it, there enough integrity of it left? And do I just need to be brave and just snip some things off? Because it is great, and it's but it's just I'm getting too many darts and too many sizes. I now have two darts in here because it, it was not shaped enough. And maybe I just need to be braver. And just take the skirt and the top apart and redo the top. I don't know. But I loved it and I really loved the process of making it. That's enough of shirts. Uh, let's talk about quick thrift flips. So these are a second hand pair of Marks and Spencer's trousers. And I always need the shirt short in these. As I said, I'm five foot two. But when they came, they were too short and they hung weird. So I actually unpicked the hem, which gave me about another inch because they were really hemmed up. But then I didn't want to turn any up. I wanted to keep the whole length. So I actually added this along the bottom so that I've gained the whole of the hem plus a little couple of extra centimetres. This trim is from Blackout Shop in Brighton. If you've never been, and when you go to Brighton, it's not quite with all the other shops, but it's only a couple of minutes away from them. It's definitely worth going to because they travel all over the world to, to source items for their shop and they often have amazing trims. This is Blackout um, Brighton, so really recommend that. So I put that on both of those I will put a picture in of me wearing them but I just think it just elevates the trousers it creates the length I'm looking for with just a bit of colour as well next one is a jumper that had been lurking around for a long time and I hadn't worn it then I have a reduction and it just looked ridiculous of me so I thought I would have a go at flipping a jumper into a cardigan I loved it so much I also had the orange one and I did the same because the fabric is so soft so there is uh, there it is and I use bias binding down the front and I'll just hold it up there so you can see it it's 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 almost like a stained glass Art Nouveau bias binding um, bias binding can be a bit of a pain I'll pop it on for you just so you can see so I kept the buttons along the shoulders that was on the jumper and then cutting it up the middle just meant that it now and I didn't have any it will, didn't put any clothes on the front it's just great these these work better now it hangs open and it's that really soft it was originally from new look really soft um 
and just when you want to throw on a cardigan like on those sort of summery days where you've got a dress on so I'm really happy with how that went and there is an orange one too that I did staying on the jumper theme I have a jumper which there is a short of that um, you can look out for you can also see the pictures of this on Instagram so I loved this jumper I bought this jumper from next it's a Madeline Thompson jumper and I bought it a few years ago you can see why I love it because my love of colour wore it and wore it and wore it post operation put it on and went oh so I just saw um, a woodpecker in the garden oh it it just doesn't look like it's part of me anymore and I was really disappointed because with quite a few of my bits of clothing actually putting them on post operation they're what much more comfortable there's no pulling around my neck there's no gaping buttons at the front a lot of pleasure and a lot of joy with not feeling uncomfortable but then I was really sad because I absolutely adore this jumper and it didn't look right anymore so I thought I'd be brave I used my serger I'll just turn it inside out so you can see and I went all the way up the side and took about two inches off and surged all the way up and all the way down the arm oh look there's still some threads there and I tapered towards the end of the arm got a bit messy there it's on the inside no one can see and then in my shawl and I think if you go to Instagram there's a picture the sleeves were still hanging down here it's kind of that jumpy fabric that almost like a bit weighty gets a bit stretchy so it looked much better on the body but the sleeves look ridiculous and some jumpers you can turn up and they look good this looks so poofy and so weird when I turn the sleeves up. I was like, what do I do? I'd started sewing with jersey. Uh, by this point, I'd made my Freya top, which you can see in my Make 9 update. And I had a bit of the lilac left. So I thought I would have a go at making some cuffs. Never made cuffs before. This was my first go at that. And actually, it's perfect. It's made a cuff. It's pulled in the jumper just right. It's created a cuff at the end and that lilac couldn't be better with the lilac that's on the jumper. I mean, look at that. It's like it was meant to be. I will pop a picture up of me wearing it. But now it looks like it belongs to me. And that's what I want when I'm wearing my clothing. I want to feel like myself in them and look like it fits me. So it's still great. It's still beautifully bright but it fits me better so after that after I'd made some cuffs I had and there's another short for this one as well I had some blue jersey like textured fabric and I'll just hold it up so you can see the texture like this texture fabric that I found funny enough in the Oxfam superstore and at the time I hadn't had any idea what to do with it and then one night I had a thought I love cohorts and if you have a look at the short, oh look, threads again. If you have a look at the short I've made on this, I looked at the cohorts, there's so many of them around with the pencil skirt and the jumper to match. I love things like that. So I, I that was it. I had it in my head to make a cohort. So I did. I made a cohort and I'll put a picture up here using the jersey fabric. So I'll just tell you about it and actually I put in a little me made label it's a page joanna one at the back there so for the pencil skirt i actually use the template for the me made skirt i made for my make nine plans which was the uh the safari skirt so i used that because it was waistbandless i then watched a couple of youtube videos about making jersey and using an elastic in the waistband so I could do that so I used the pattern as a template to get the right shape and it meant that I I actually still put darts in because I watched a video by somebody who talked about how the darts can still help so I just put the darts in at the back and joined it at the back because I did a split at the back so I did a join so I'd got the foot back at the front I just did a different so that's where I varied from the pattern because in the pattern the split was at the side so I just changed that and how I cut it on the fold 
So there's the skirt. It's a nice and straightforward, just a really comfy pencil skirt. And when I stitched this, I surged it and under turned it under. And again, using the tip, I stitched in the ditch of the seam, which then holds it in place. And it's not another stitch. And I did it on the darts as well. So it means that it naturally holds in place but there's no extra stitching and no chances then of ruffling. So that was the skirt. And then I decided for the jumper to self draft a jumper using a jumper I had that I liked the shape of. And it was a vintage eighties jumper, pink jumper. If you watch the short on this, you can see the jumper I used. So I laid it down and I created the jumper shape. So it is a bit of a back wing Type, but it's got like it's not a grain on sleeve it's like a separate sleeve so it's almost like a square body and then I got to the sleeve and I actually decided to create like the long cuff so I hemmed it at each end um I couldn't decide whether to go short or long cuff to start with and I was really playing around with it and I asked my partner and he said that's a weird length and I did explain that a long cuff is classic vintage silhouette particularly from the 80s but also there's lots of long cuffs out there now and then creating like a long cuff and then the billowing sleeve and if you look at my short with the cord I might put a few pictures up here there are quite a lot of rounds like that so it meant that when you wear the jumper you get like the billowing at this bit so I was really happy with that so I spent a lot of time and I actually even uh FaceTime called my mum to ask her what she thought as well and I did quite a short length to the jumper and I didn't do a cuff at the bottom I nearly did to bring it in but I didn't want the bulk because then I can wear it over or tucked in with this to create like a seamless look I'm really happy with how it how it turned out considering I completely sort of made it up as I went along I really thought carefully I surged it all um and then i used uh the my twin needle along the edges i think that turned out really well happy with that and um it's just one of those things that is like secret pajamas it looks really you look really put together it's really easy to put like a bit of silver jewelry on or, or, or a, a belt and suddenly you look put together and really you're just wearing two bits of lovely jersey but the blue as you can tell is a color that i really love so that is sort of a little tour of some of my thrift flips. I have done a lot of taking in of clothing since my operation um, and there were things that I'd sort of widened out that now I'm bringing in and I had a whole pile um, after my operation which I did. I've just had a big sort out of my summer clothes because at the moment a bit like when I talked about the green jumper, when I first put things on that I haven't worn since post-op, things don't always look the way I expect them to, and then I end up having a, a wardrobe crisis. So I've done a lot of trying on. I will take you with me. I'll do a video on my journey of making my summer clothes work for me, and so I'll do one of that, and you can follow along as I, as what I do, the small changes, the big changes, because I think it's in that process of how do I make this suit me and make me feel comfortable and happy in what I'm wearing. I really hope you found that interesting. I hope you enjoyed hearing my thought processes and the things I'm trialling and creating and building that wardrobe that just works for me. Love it if you could subscribe, like, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments as well. And uh, I hope you have a good week and uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you for coming. Bye.